Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. You know what? Listen, can we t- can we talk about the NRA? What, what, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. What's do you have a stat? <laughs> I know that you have like, uh, you, you know, you've been at the NRA. You've uh, did you ever work for the NRA? I know. Well, you know how it, I did a lot of projects for Ackerman McQueen, which okay. I'm sure you how things are set up. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing more stuff on the, like I was on their committee, their outreach committee. Okay. Um, and then try to get on the board, mm-hmm. uh, which was, you know, stopped which was immediately, you know, basically. Um, so yeah, like I, it was just, a, it was me starting out with them as when I was doing student for concealed carry and going on their radio show um, with Cameron. Okay. And then after that, it was then them asking me to do Freedom Safest Place mm-hmm. and then do stuff on Napoleon's show. I did a mm-hmm. couple things on with his show and then just, then I spoke at Atlanta. Like, so I just did project after project, but I never was like on their payroll. Okay. Anything like that. I wasn't full time with them. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of how it went. And yeah. Eh. <laughs> All right, so uh, hold on. I'm sorry about this here. Just hold on one second. Uh, I think Lola's okay. telling me to switch the internet. I don't know if we're. Let me know. Are you still getting me out there? You still getting me? Yeah. I'm okay. Getting you. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. No. No. Yeah. I just want to make sure everything's going good because Lola's telling me to to uh, to uh, switch it a little bit here. Okay. So you kind of worked for Ackerman McQueen, but not like on a permanent basis like Coleon did. Uh, right. You were kind right. of like. Uh, like semi working, semi working for them. Kind of okay. like a contributor. I just did projects when they wanted okay. to help out with stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So did that continue all the way up to this meltdown that we're seeing here? Because I know we had Coleon Noir on. We had him on, and he said he found out like the whole NRA TV thing was falling apart and all of that. He found out on from the newspapers. Mm, um, wow. Did was that your story, or did you get out before that? What happened there? <laughs> Um, yeah, I already, to be honest, I already kind of felt like I was being pushed out by then anyways, hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. I mean, that's a whole other, sorry, I should have started that two hours ago, but. Right. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, we got time. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're like, wait, no. no, no. Yeah. We're getting to the juicy um, stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> so what, why do you feel like they were pushing you out? They didn't like your message or the way that you were delivering it. You were just too much woman for them. You know, what was, what was the, what was the thing? I'm not saying it. I don't know what, you know, like, right. but no, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm almost a hundred percent sure I'm no longer on the outreach committee. Okay. But I never got, we always get, um, some type of, usually September. Um, it's usually right, right before then for the next meeting. And I haven't received anything. And that's the same thing that happened with Tim Knight and Esther mm-hmm. and, uh, all the other people, those people, by the way, are the ones that I usually hung out with the most. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause I felt welcomed by them mm-hmm. the most. Uh, so it just, yeah, Tim's good dude. Things. It's, it's, you know, it's, um, <laughs> it's kind of sad to see that those guys got to the point that they had to say, Hey, we got to step away from this. That's this bad. Right. 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 But yeah. seeing it on my side too, I, I completely see why, okay. um, that they did that. No, like, not like it's justified. It's just, they're definitely people who were, they were going to, they weren't going to just take this settle, like sitting down. Like they're, they were the Liberty people. They were, they mm-hmm. wanted to see effective, you know, change. Um, but that's not what they, what NRA wants right now. At least the people who are in leadership. So, um, so yeah, for me, it's just, I, I felt that a long time ago when they didn't nominate me after like that big push me to run the first time, um, and said, I didn't do it the right way, whatever, like all this stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, they change the, you know, changing it to five years as a lifetime member. Yeah, they um, made the rules even more restrictive, made it even more difficult for us to, uh, right, excuse me, to right, get in there like, and make changes, right? Right, like two weeks after I announced my mm-hmm. second time. So yeah. after like, oh, you should run again. You should totally run again. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. So, I mean, that's a, I mean, after I'm on the, the internet second, here. I was, pretty quiet yeah. about it no i just um, switched back to, i just switched back oh, sorry. i'm sorry lola is like okay. throwing me off here <laughs> oh the internet here went off it's not off it's bad again oh. oh okay no i'm good we i think we're good, we're good? Okay. yeah i'll switch back if we uh, yeah this uh, okay. it's like a whole saga over here with the internet <laughs> so sometimes i gotta switch to my phone i gotta switch to my oh, my okay. barber shop is downstairs i gotta jump on his <laughs> internet sorry about that okay yeah I, i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you okay go ahead no you're good 
Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what I was talking about before. So we're t- um, yeah, we're talking about like they changed the rules and all that when um like you were going to run for a seat on the board, right? Right. Okay. Right. Um and, and so it was just and whether that was on purpose or not, I mean, I know they were thinking about it for a long time and then they finally just like, you know what? Let's pass it this time. Like, okay. Whatever. But at, but, but basically at that point though, it was just I had not felt welcomed. And there were several times where I just like get pull aside, like, don't say that you're saying this. People don't like you when you do this. Like it was a lot of like, you need to, if you're going to be here, you need to stay in line. Yeah. And a lot of hand holding. That's not how I am. Yeah. I'm not like that. So, right. yeah, it just yeah. never worked out. No, I, I feel you with that. I think a lot of that's going on. What do you think about the, everything that's happening with the NRA right now? What's your overall opinion of it? You know, I actually just just became a firearms instructor like a couple of months ago, mm-hmm. and reading, I had to learn go through the history of NRA and stuff, and it was just made me really realize like the NRA has been, <laughs> first of all, the NRA has been around for a long time. Oh yeah. And a, what has been happening the last forty years or whatever, what nineteen seventies is when all that stuff. Like it's not what the NRA like began as, and there's a lot of good stuff about the NRA. There's a lot of history a lot of i mean even on the the race aspect the fact people can history of like them giving cards uh membership cards to black people when they couldn't they still couldn't even drink out of the same water fountains as, mm-hmm. black, as white people right like so there's a lot of amazing history with nra and i don't think i'm not one of those people who just think just completely wipe out the nra let's just start over i think we have a great base and the nra is doing good things when it comes to that and the training aspect and stuff like that. Just unfortunately, right now, there's a lot of crap that's going on, and I, I honestly believe that there are people who are holding on to positions that shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, because it's like in any company at this point, you shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, but for something that has that, I'm not saying, and that's part of it too. I was so upset about in the beginning was even with the board. I was like, but I want to be a part of fighting for the Second Amendment, and finally, God was just like. Dude, the NRA is not the Second Amendment. Like, no. <laughs> they're not the only one fighting for our rights, and and like right. that. That's not uh, we. So they have so much market uh, value, right? Or um, what do they call it when they say that? Basically, you think of Second Amendment, you think of NRA. Yeah, they well, kind of they they believe that they own the brand. I think that right. I think what's happening that, that's really wrong to me is that. Um, a lot of the people on the top there that are really running the show, one of the things I've found out over the years is that the show is really run by a couple of people, a handful of people, Wayne LaPierre being the, the primary. It's almost like Putin in Russia, you know, and, and I think that um, they, they've got a lot of money and power that comes from us. But they've gotten to the point, like a lot of Republicans out there, that they're just abusing it now and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, they're really just fighting for themselves at this point. I, I wish that something could be said, that they could hear it, that you have this beautiful old uh, thing that means so much to us. Let go of it. Don't, you know, don't burn it down to the ground around yourself. Just let go of it so that it can continue. But they just don't see it that way. I don't think LaPierre sees it that way or anyone else in his inner circle that that's really keeping him there when the rest of us are saying, hey, it's time for you guys to go. Right. And you would see like what saved the NRA and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. that nonprofit that just started. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, those people who are probably the most vocal against like what's going on right now. At the end of the day, they're still saying, like, look, save the NRA. Yeah. Like, we're, we shouldn't just burn, like, we shouldn't take, you know, just throw away the the baby with the bathwater type thing. Like, yeah. this is important for a lot of people. And at the end of the, I think still, though, there's still room to say, like, this also goes to show, like, why we shouldn't put, like, all of our trust into the Second Amendment, into one organization. Mm-hmm. Like, we should allow other organizations like Gun Owners of America, mm-hmm. like, you know, National Association of Gun Rights, like mm-hmm. all these other, you know, gun rights or empowered, you know, like moving yeah. up in the world who are who are filling the, the voids that NRA didn't want to or didn't, you know, fill before. Because um, I think every organization has has so, some type of talent of or, or gifting that they should utilize. It shouldn't just be one organization who's carrying the mantle for our whole right. Yeah, I think so. we need to be smarter about how we fight this fight, right? The, the the other guys out there, they're creating lots of different organizations, and they realize that almost like if this cell gets taken down, this cell's going to stand up. We can't just leave right. ourselves in a position where if the NRA gets taken down, then we have nothing. 
We really right. do need to support other places. Look, today in the news, um, this is on CNN politics. I'm not a fan of CNN, but um, I'll just pull this up for everyone so they can see this, and I'll read this to you. I don't know if you saw it. Wall Street Journal, NRA agreed to pay $6.5 million oh. for Wayne LaPierre Mansion. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that a few days yeah. ago, actually. So National Rifle <laughs> Association previously agreed to pay $6.5 million to buy a mansion for CEO Wayne LaPierre, uh, the Wall Street Journal reported Tuesday. A top NRA executive, then chief financial officer and treasurer, Wilson H. Phillips Jr., signed a document in May 2018 promising the gun lobby would contribute $6.5 million for 99% ownership of a company formed to buy a Dallas mansion for LaPierre. I mean, it goes on, they wound up not actually doing it. Uh, you guys can always read this article, but this is just like another thing. Like, we're, you know, this is where the money was going. <laughs> right, exactly. And I mean, from the wardrobe thing, which I know there's a, there's some people could have been like, well, that was part of his job, but right. yeah, $6.5 million mansion. Yeah. Um, so, man, 